All right, taking, uh, I started with um, future war. I started with war modeling, modeling and simulation design, which uh, jumping through a few topics got me to future war concepts. Um, so I found this one, not sure, not sure at all what I'm going to find here and take a quick look at. This is a United States Marine Corps Command and Staff College paper. A future warfare concept paper. The title is actually an Australian land force for conflict in a world without precedent. So this is not related to the image I pulled for the video here. Um, that image is from the Army's multi-domain battle, multi-domain operations concept. So these are separate. But I wanted to pull that image for this topic. Um, and While I obviously don't have any particular connection to Australian land forces, it is interesting, a land force concept for conflict in, again, as, as it's put here, a world without precedent. So let's see, um, again, Marine Corps Staff College, um, okay, from 2009, so 10 years old. Um, what do we have here? Um, hmm. What time frame? Hmm. Okay, so this is looking at the formation of a new warfighting organization. So we're talking about organizational changes. Um, and this uh, formation called an Expeditionary Task Force, ETF. Um, it has traditional industrial age structures and comprises five functional... Com Boy, this looks familiar <laughs> actually all right so a command element or a headquarters that's one element two a recon strike group that's two number three a close combat group number four a maneuver support group and five a force sustainment group this looks awfully familiar to some other concepts um and this is okay what's the conclusion the author draws uh, for the australian army um, the threats that the Australian Army will confront in 2020, so basically only 10 years in the future, will be more complex and demanding than any previously experienced. Mm, a little over the top expectation or assumption. Um, but armies in general, no matter what country or what particulars, want to get the right type and mix of personal organizations. Equipment, doctrine, training, and support facilities. That looks like .no PF. Uh, future warfighting organization proposed in this paper seeks to address those challenges, of course. All right. So what? Again, the ETF, Expeditionary Task Force. Um, sensor wars. Okay. Um, now that's interesting. Conflict in the age of Mad Max. That sounds interesting. So we have enduring features. Okay, friction, chance, and danger. Like Clausewitz would understand. Sensor wars. Okay, this is Sobrowski. Sensor wars. The majority of weapon systems in 2002 generally have a greater range than their supporting sensors. Okay. Okay. So you want to deny or degrade an adversary sensor capability. But in 2020, the battle to extend the reach of friendly sensors C through enemy deception measures and deny the adversary use of their sensors will constitute a key enabling function in any conflict. Okay, a sensors battle. Nonlinear warfare. Now that's interesting because nonlinear warfare, uh, yeah, nonlinear warfare, pretty sure that was the terminology was, U.S. Army concept discussed more than normal. Uh, I think there's always somebody talking about nonlinear warfare, one type or another. Um, but it was even more prevalent in the early 90s. Um, small footprints. Okay. Yes. A great goal. Land operations in the 21st century. Okay. Point one. Um, okay, war remains in human activity, even if technology changes. Got it. Um, the sensor contest, so we're back to the sensor battle, is the central element of future conflict. That's interesting. 
Basically, this is the side that blinds the other side first wins. Hmm, interesting assumption. So sensor superiority is the linchpin to victory, point three. Land forces must be capable of multi-paradigm operations. <laughs> multi-paradigm, okay. So they're talking about, okay, this is operating across the spectrum of military conflicts. So we're talking high, high intensity combat on the one hand, heavy force on force, all the way down to war fighting, peace enforcement, keep and peacekeeping and humanitarian operations. This is the um, so-called three block war. Um, okay, so that's multi-paradigm operations. Number four, to retain tactical agility in a chaotic uh, battle space, the land force must possess excellent tactical mobility. All right, tactical mobility uh, with dispersion and concentration as needed. Number five, future land force. Okay, must conduct a dispersed effects-based operations. Point six, the future land force must be protected and sustained. Okay. All right, limitation. Okay, a new warfighting organization. Here's the ETF. Uh, so what do we got? Manning. Okay, uh, um, headquarters of 100 in manpower. Um, a reconnaissance strike group of 700 manning. A close combat group of 700, isn't that interesting? The reconnaissance strike group has more. Um, is larger than the close combat group. Maneuver support group of 350 and force sustainment group of 350. What was that for 19, 2000? This looks really familiar. Um, okay. Strike and reconnaissance and sustainment all at the small brigade, almost regimental level. Yes, 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 yes. So now how is it used? How is it employed? We got everything about its organization. Um, how is it? What are we looking at? Generation of Expeditionary Task Force Combat Power, National and Allied Enablers, Joint Enablers, Army Enablers, and then the ETF enablers, which again at the ETF level, C2 recon strike, close combat, maneuver support, logistics. Army is going to add, let's see, adds rotary wing lift and fires. Okay. Joint enablers adds air superiority, um, high speed air and, and Sea transport, okay, joint fires, situational awareness, national and allied enablers, national policy, military strategy, force generations, um, situational awareness, BMD, ballistic missile defense. Now, how do all of those enablers really get um, brought to bear? Hmm. Makes you wonder. Makes you wonder. Um, all right. What is this research based on? It is based on, let's see. Um, all right. Uh, well, we have Alvin and Heidi Toffler, so futurist civilians. War and Anti-War, Survival of the Dawn of the 21st Century, the book by the Tofflers from 1993. S.P. Rosen, Winning the Next War. I need to look for that. Yes, I do. All right. It's S.P. Rosen. I wonder if that's Stephen Rosen, author, Winning the Next War by the Brookings Institution from 2000. I need to look for that. Um, Clausewitz, um, Sobrowski, Admiral Sobrowski, um, Martin Libicki, The Mesh and the Net, Speculations on Armed Conflict in a Time of Free Silicon, McNair Paper, I need to look for that too, 
Another one by Libby Key, Illuminating Tomorrow's War, also a McNair paper from 1999. I gotta look for that. Um, so that has to do with winning the censor war, the censor battle mentioned before. And Libicki apparently came up with an idea called censor mesh to do that, to win the censor battle. Um, okay. Um, what else? Um, Robert Scales. Okay, the army after next interwinning, intertwining military, art, science, and technology out to 2025. I need to find this. Future Warfare Anthology. Major General Robert Scales wrote about the velocity of maneuver. I need to find this. All right. Um, um, William Lind. The Changing Face of War into the Fourth Generation. So now we're into Fourth Generation Warfare. Or, and Generational Warfare ideas. Um, that's what this is based on. Not too big a surprise, but still some interesting things here in the the base uh, research for this paper. Um, well, yeah, okay. Um, that is about, yep, that's it. All right. Um, Expedition, Expeditionary Task Force Organization in even more detail. So, for example, the recon strike group is made up of what? It's made up of light armored recon. Unmanned robotic recon, okay. Unattended ground sensors, target acquisition sensors, okay. Armed aerial recon, unmanned aerial recon. Um, UCAV, full spectrum information operations, long range precision fires. All right, so th this actually is uh, relevant to thinking to be done today these days. Um, the close combat group is made up of light infantry, um, embedded in direct fire support, light mechanized troop lift, light mechanized AT, light mechanized C2. All right. Okay, so basically this is mixing again in, in about a 2,000 man or single organization, you're basically mixing armored recon with light infantry with engineers and uh, support, which is transportation, medical, maintenance, and supply. That's what it is, basically. Um, hmm. I didn't realize the sources were already separated for me. All right. That is about, again, I don't see. Um, yep, I wouldn't. All right, I got everything. All right, so this is a paper to keep handy and see what can be pulled out and used uh, today, actually.